On today's primetime local news, one local school cooked up meals for the men's shelter in the theme of kindness. They can make the, an extra effort to uh, go above and beyond. And Dr. Temple Grandin made her first speaking appearance in over 20 years at AgriVisions. People want the magic new thing, a new handling facility, some new piece of equipment, and think that's going to solve all their problems. It doesn't replace management. Plus, local seniors share their love stories for Valentine's Day. I think you got to talk to each other and don't be afraid to say if something's not quite right. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. This week, City Council approved the recommended grant allocations and authorized the FCSS committee to reallocate any unused or returned funds. 16 grants were approved of the 22 applications that totaled almost $180,000, which was up 17 applications in 2018, totaling more than $137,000. The SAS Lottery's grant program provided 88000 almost half as much as the total application's amount. Well, when you see those things and you can't help everybody, um, but decisions have to be made, they have to meet, meet the allocation process, they have to meet all the requirements that go with it. Um, so uh, the committee did their best to make sure they could fund the things that met the requirements uh, and all for the betterment of all of those organizations. It really depends on and the merits of those projects weighted against the requirements set out by the government of Saskatchewan through the lottery money that comes. Mayor Albers noted that while times are tough on the many nonprofit, they can only approve grants on a case-by-case -case basis. Either their costs have gone up, which incurs to everybody, but grants are down, uh, corporate support is down, donations are down, so you, you look at every opportunity. There's a need in the community. It's a matter of trying to balance the needs to the, money, the resources we have. The two largest grants, both $10,000, will go to Midwest Family Connections and the Lloydminster Interval Home Society. Earlier today, students at Avery School were cooking meals for the men's shelter in the theme of kindness wins around the border city. The staff and students at Avery School worked all morning on the meals they cooked for the men's shelter. For our Kindness Wins grant that we received with um, BE On Borders uh, Circle of Change. And so we have a, a great crew behind us, uh, some new to us uh, as far as students go, and some uh, have been with us for a while. So we kind of threw everybody together and uh, are looking to, to see what their cooking skills can bring. This is the second year the students at Avery School have cooked meals for the shelter. I think it's important to like give back to the community and they have done this last year and so I think it'd be special to do it again this year. For the staff, cooking these meals is a good way to get to bond with the students as well as instilling the spirit of kindness. Positive feedback. Um, it's kind of been a goofy morning in the kitchen and uh, the, the spirits are good, um, especially going into a, a week off school. Um, just the, the idea of paying it forward and uh, being community minded I think it is pretty huge to our crew here and uh, staff and students. Schools across the border city all do kindness events throughout the month and these activities help remind them that kindness is important every day. I think that um, kindness is, is huge and so I think if um, they can make the, an extra effort to uh, go above and beyond and just a reminder in, in the month of, of February here, I think that's important and then it should translate to the rest of the year. They delivered the meals to the men's shelter later on in the day. Lloydminster Young Professionals had their first event of the year last night at Primerica involving food, drinks and like-minded individuals. Once a month, this group tries to get together to mingle, network, and explore new businesses. Members of the group ended up getting too busy over the summer for these events, so now the chair members are trying to bring it back. I think it's a great group. It's a group. So many people are new to Lloydminster and come to Lloydminster. It's a great way to meet new people in many different industries. You have everything from accountants to teachers that come out and get to know a new group of friends. Right now they have been talking with a couple of charities and hope to help get some exposure for them as well. The group is hoping to explore new places in the future and believe it's important for people in Lloydminster to know about them. I'd lived away for six years. I didn't know anyone in Lloydminster and I just moved back. I came out to one of our events and now I have a great group of friends I hang out with. Even outside of these events, it's an awesome organization to join. 
If you'd like to get in contact, you can find the Lloydminster Young Professionals Group on Facebook. New love, first love, old love, they all have special things about them. For these seniors, the most special times of their lives were spent with the love of their lives. Our Montana Getty has more. He said to me, he wanted to marry me from the first time he saw me. Fell in love first sight. Seniors at the Pioneer Lodge shared their love stories for Valentine's Day today. How long were you married for? 69 years. One couple even met right here at Pioneer Lodge. So he moved in a year ago. I moved in two years ago. And uh, he was, a, I call him my crippled banjo picker because he was having problems. So I helped him out and that's how we got together. She's a very, very good person. She helps everybody here, not only me. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be walking. When asked how they kept their relationship strong for so long, they shared their knowledge. I think you got to talk to each other. And don't be afraid to say if something's not quite right. You can work it out. Well, you have to love your better half a lot more than a lot of people think. And you have to laugh. <laughs> Laughter is the best medicine. You've got to laugh a lot and you've got to love a lot. All I can tell you is what my dad told me. I left home when I joined the Army Air Force when I was 18. He said, don't ever wake up in the morning with somebody you wouldn't marry. <laughs> <laughs> laugh lots. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Don't fight. Yeah. Don't argue. <laughs> but if you disagree, well, disagree, but don't have a fight. <laughs> and when I asked what their favorite thing was about their significant other, they opened up even more. I think cuddling up to him night in bed, <laughs> filling his tummy. <laughs> yeah. She puts up with me. Yeah? <laughs> Done a pretty good job, too. It's jokes, I guess. Keeps yeah. us laughing all the time. Yeah. Oh, she, she, she was always there. She was pretty hard to beat. <laughs> Montana Getty, Primetime Local News. Now to our Abbey St. John with the weather. Thanks, Jasmine. It's currently minus 13 here, and as we get into evening, just a little bit of cloud coverage, partially cloudy, uh, but mostly clear skies. There is a bit of a chance that we could see just a little bit of flurries at early this evening, but nothing too major. Uh, coming in from the northwest, winds at 15 kilometers per hour, making it feel closer to minus 21 with that wind chill. Across Alberta, minus 15 in Cold Lake, minus 16 in Athabasca, minus 10 in Whitecourt, minus 11 in Edmonton, minus 5 in Red Deer, minus 3 in Rocky Mountain House, minus 6 in Edson, and plus 1 out in Jasper. And on the Saskatchewan side, minus 13 in Meadow Lake, minus 9 in Prince Albert and Saskatoon, minus 10 in Melfort and in North Battleford. Overnight in North Battleford, the temperature will drop to minus 26, and that wind will be uh, coming in from the west northwest at 17 kilometers per hour. And then tomorrow they have a daytime high of minus 18 and that wind will be at 9 kilometers per hour coming in from the west southwest. In Cold Lake overnight there's about a 30% chance of some snowfall early this evening. Temperature dropping to minus 29 overnight and that wind will be at 11 kilometers per hour coming in from the west northwest and remain that speed tomorrow. However, coming in from the southwest with a daytime high of minus 16 and there's about a 60% chance of some snowfall in the late afternoon. Here in Lloydminster over Overnight, the temperature will drop to minus 27 and that wind will be at 17 kilometers per hour coming in from the northwest and then slow down to 11 kilometers per hour tomorrow coming in from the southwest with a daytime high of minus 17 and about a 30% chance that we could see some snow in the afternoon. Uh, and for your high for minus 17 will feel closer to minus 27 with that wind chill with a low of minus 27. On Sunday will be a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 26 with the, uh, and a low of minus 18 with that wind chill it will feel closer to minus 26. And on Monday will be a high of minus 18 which will feel closer to minus 30 and a low of minus 22. That is a look at your three day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Welcome back. Dr. Temple Grandin returned to the border city at this year's AgriVisions, sharing her knowledge on animal behavior to ranchers in the area. Our Eric Bay has more on how Grandin's insights are keeping farmers safe while producing better animals. 
Having seen many things over her career as an animal behaviorist, Dr. Temple Grandin credits being able to observe and think visually with helping her understand livestock and their habits. And when I first started back in the 70s, when I was in my 20s, I thought everybody was a visual thinker. Now I've learned that there's different kinds of thinking. Some people are much more verbal, other people are much more mathematical. But when you think visually, it would be obvious to me to look at what cattle were looking at. And observation is extremely important in stockmanship. Grandin is using her observations to share the importance of good stockmanship and its impact on production and safety for both producers and animals. Handling cattle and the stockmanship often doesn't get enough credit. People, too often people want the magic new thing, a new handling facility, some new piece of equipment, and think that's going to solve all their problems. It doesn't replace management. Taking the time to implement proper handling can pay off in the end, with calmer livestock producing better results. Cattle that jump all around in squeeze chutes, struggling, had lower weight gains. That's been replicated a whole bunch of times. Cattle that run out of squeeze chutes fast have lower weight gains. Fear reduces uh, weight gain. It's so important to have really good stockmanship. It really does matter. There's a lot of studies that show that animals that are afraid of people are less productive animals. Just like pets, one way to reduce that fear is tone. And the thing about stockmanship is you have to keep kind of assessing it to make sure you don't slip back into old bad behaviors like yelling and screaming. And yelling and screaming is really bad because it has intent and cattle know that you're mad at them. Limiting stress should be constantly on producers' minds to work towards improving stockmanship, according to Grandin. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. Now let's take a look at your egg prices. part of less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops and Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Centre Auto Body. The Saturday will be seniors night for the Lakeland Rustlers women's volleyball team. Our Evan Kenny has more on what this weekend means. The Rustlers women will be taking on the Kings University Eagles. The Eagles currently sit one spot ahead of the wrestlers and are only two points out of first place. Just focusing on making sure that all of our games this semester were preparing us for playoffs and getting ready for that. While tonight's game is all business, tomorrow night the wrestlers will take a moment and recognize their seniors. You know, when, when her career is over, playing five years, we're not going to be talking about all these stats or these records or, or all these different things. The talk is going to be that She's a volleyball player. Avery Maginel is the only player who's going to be graduating from the team this year. The fifth year medal has played in every single set and has racked up 94 kills along with 33 blocks. The blocks are good enough to place her eighth in the entire ACAC. I recruited her as a middle blocker and we moved her to the right side right away. Well, not right away, but after a semester we moved her to the right side and then she played there and she started on the right side and then and then Bailey came in and Bailey's excelled so then she had to share time and um, then we communicated about you know potentially moving her back to the middle because we were struggling recruiting middles and you know she was an experienced player and could do all those things and learn how to play the game and you're going to have success and that's what she's done. Next weekend the wrestlers have a bye before heading into playoffs in Medicine Hat at the end of the month. Evan Tenney, Primetime Local Sports. Now to our Abbey St. John with the weather. Thanks, Jasmine. Taking a look at our satellite radar, not as much snow activity as we saw yesterday, but there's still some activity outside the Edmonton area, making its way more east and a little bit down south as well. Uh, here in Lloydminster, there's a chance that we could see some snowfall early this evening and about a 30% chance that it could snow late tomorrow afternoon. In up in Cold Lake, they also have about a 30% chance of seeing snow early this evening and then a 60% chance tomorrow uh, during the afternoon. On the Saskatchewan side, not as much snow activity 
over, uh, from what we've seen in the past couple of days. North Battleford, uh, no uh, large signs of snowfall. Uh, a little bit maybe early this evening, but none for tomorrow. Uh, minus 13 currently here in Lloydminster, as well as in Maidstone and in St. Walberg. Minus 6 in Macklin, minus 10 in North Battleford, minus 14 in Meadow Lake and Pierceland, minus 12 in Green Lake, and minus 21 up in Isle of Cross. On the Alberta side, minus 12 in Vermilion, minus 9 in Provost, minus 13 in Marwayne, minus 14 in Beggarville, St. Paul and Bonneville, minus 15 in Cold Lake and Lac La Biche, and minus 11 out in Edmonton. And tomorrow, minus 17 here in Lloydminster, as well as in Marwayne, minus 16 in Vermilion, St. Paul, Bonneville, Cold Lake, Lac La Biche, minus 14 in Wainwright, minus 13 in Beggarville, minus 9 in Edmonton, and minus 12 in Provost. On the Saskatchewan side, minus 19 in Isla Cross and in St. Walberg, minus 17 in Maidstone and Green Lake, minus 16 in Pierceland, minus 18 in Meadow Lake and North Battleford, and minus 12 in Macklin. Overnight across the region, fairly cold, cold temperatures overnight. Uh, Murnum expecting some snowfall uh, this evening and uh, cl heavier cloud coverage in Provost and Unity. Minus 28 in Meadow Lake and Bonneville, minus 27 in Isla Cross, minus 29 in Paradise Hill and Pierceland, minus 26 in Unity and Murnum, minus 23 in Provost and minus 25 in Wainwright for your overnight temperatures. And then nationally across Canada, plus seven out in Vancouver where they're experiencing mixed of sun and cloud. Minus 5 in Regina where it's fairly cloudy. Up in Yellowknife it's minus 24 where they're experiencing some snowfall. Minus 10 in Winnipeg. Uh, minus 22 in Quebec City where they're sitting fairly clear skies as well as in Halifax where they're sitting at minus 17. Minus 14 in St. John's where it's partially cloudy. Over the next seven days a high of minus 17 and a low of minus 27 for tomorrow. And then on Sunday a mix of sun and cloud with a high of minus 10 and a low of minus 8. Back on Monday, a high of minus 18 and a low of minus 22. On Tuesday, it will be a high of minus 20 and a low of minus 28. On Wednesday, a fairly sunny day with a high of minus 7 and a low of minus 25. On Thursday, it will be a high of minus 2 and a low of minus 13. And then back on Friday, we get above zero with a high of plus 2 and a low of minus 9 with a mix of sun and cloud. That is a look at your 7-day forecast. We'll have more news in the question of the day coming up after the break. Today is Valentine's Day and our question of the day is kind of themed around that. It is what is the best memory you have with the loved one? And we got a lot of cute comments on our Facebook page. Yeah, we got a couple. Um, one sitting at the lake with her middle of the night where it, waiting for the eclipse a year ago. Another one was meeting him and then every day there's something new. That's my favorite memory. And car rides with my grandpa and walks together at Bud Miller Park. So very cute and sentimental memories to always remember which is really nice to see and sometimes some of the most romantic memories and some of just like the favorite memories you have with someone can be something like as simple as like walking around or even just like hanging out with them so it, it can really depend on who you're with that will make that memory with you exactly and it doesn't necessarily have to be a significant other as we did see in the comments uh, walking with grandpa um, and so Valentine's Day doesn't have to be around you know how much money you spend on your significant other. It simply could just be what are you doing to show your family or your friends that you love them um, on this special day. And just creating memories with people is a lot that's like really important and that's how you know you have some of your favorite memories with your loved one. I know for me like the people said with their grandpa you know just spending time with them. My grandma, grand, grandpa sorry loves his garden so just like going out with him and going with his garden and stuff is just like a great memory I have with him. Yes definitely I have so many memories with my grandparents unfortunately they've all passed but those will always live on um, with me so that's always nice to just remember you know you can use Valentine's Day as a way of reflecting on what you've done with your loved ones and what you will do um, and just the small things that make it the most memorable I think yeah exactly and one thing we do love looking at is your pets so we're gonna take a look at your pet pictures so thank you to everyone who submitted your pictures we will be giving away a pet pad gift card at the end of this hour
We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. In studio now with two members of the women's basketball team at Lakeland College, Jaden Cook and Brianne Hergott, coming off of what I'm sure must have been a very exhausting trip back <laughs> from uh, Paris, France. You guys were there for basically a whole week, uh, not counting the amount of time it spent getting to France and then getting back to Canada. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I really realized how like much it was going to take out of you, you know, like getting there, you kind of get going and you're like, oh, you know, not really realizing, but now I'm definitely feeling it. Yeah. yeah. And so you guys were delayed as well when you came back, correct? You were yeah. still in the airport at one point? We had a longer layover from Toronto to Edmonton yeah. and it just kept getting pushed, at, pushed back. We ended up staying in Edmonton on Saturday night, night. and having so. to drive home Sunday morning. Just like that extra time was like, oh, we just want to get home. Yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine <laughs> that would be frustrating. Although, obviously, lots of opportunity to bond as a team. Maybe in some respects, you guys were sick of each other by the end of it, but you probably learned more than a few things about each other. I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, getting to experience everything with like 10 or whatever with your teammates is pretty unreal. Yeah. And, uh, do you have any particular highlights of that as a group or individually? Because obviously you got to see the Eiffel Tower, you saw a professional basketball game there, yeah. you competed against some high-level teams. Mm -hmm. What sticks out for you individually? I think there was one last day where we all spent together and it was like the best day ever, I think, in my opinion, when we were there because we got to see the Eiffel Tower together, like go figure out downtown, walk around, and then we had to like convene our way to watching our pro basketball game. And <laughs> I was gonna say, just like having to maneuver around the city, like was pretty entertaining. Yeah, it's the, so, yeah. the first few days we kind of had Chris with us and he was helping, or we were in smaller pockets and we knew where we were going, but we had to take like a cab <laughs> and a transit and we were late and lost and people running into train doors. And like, it was just, I mean, those are all great memories yeah. though. And that's obviously a very big city, so I know mm -hmm. you guys have spent time in places like Calgary, Edmonton for playing. Yeah. Um, neither of you are from big areas, though, correct? So what was no. it like being in a city this huge? Definitely different, it's, I think. It is different, and then, like, using the transit was a big thing, especially in a different language. So, like, you really, if you're unsure, like, it's a little scary. But, yeah, it was really cool. And people from different, like, we have Aussies, we have Bill Gay, who's from Europe, we have, like, people from Humboldt, <laughs> we have people from, like, all over. So it just, like, having to, everyone wants to, like, try and help is just, it was, it was a whole thing. <laughs> it would have probably been a different experience if you went by yourself, obviously, then. Yeah, oh, for sure. So. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have enjoyed it as much. Yeah, no. Yeah, I think I would have been scared if I was by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and on the basketball side, productive trip, I assume? Yeah. yeah, really good compete level for us, I think. I think we got a lot out of our last two games. For sure. Um, they were really, like, talented, and I think it was really good competition, especially going into the next three weeks of our season, yeah. like, kind of getting out those kinks and working on things that we wouldn't get out of our own practice. Yeah, getting closer to that playoff mark. Yeah. yeah. And so that's an interesting way to use your bye week, obviously, because most other yeah. teams just essentially rest and get healthy, but you guys played three games in a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so. definitely different. Yes. I think it's good, though, like, we, obviously, we still would have been practicing Chris doesn't like to give us too much time off, right. so that was a cool way to, I guess, utilize that time off. Absolutely. What coach does like giving his, his or her team, <laughs> team time off. Um, and then uh, you guys also obviously got to enjoy some of the culinary aspects mm -hmm. of France. Was there a particular shop or a dish that you'll take with you and never forget? Mm. Our last <laughs> night we had um, like a really like fancy expensive meal and Brie and I were like, oh, like let's get like, I was like, I'll get steak and she got this like, what do you get? It's carpaccio. It was so. like this like thinly sliced steak and we were like, oh, it's going to be so good. And then it wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be. <laughs> but I think for the most part, the food was really good. It was. And yeah, I think Torian um, pipes got snails. Yeah. Oh. So I didn't need any, I but they look so it interesting. Really <laughs> Some very high-class dining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No, and, it was good. And now you guys can translate this into a week where you've been sort of jet lagged. You were saying off camera that you basically slept from nine to nine the other day. Mm -hmm. um, how do you take that uh, that uh, difference in, in terms of your training times and stuff and now go into a week where you still have to play a good team in Augustana? I think we just need to be really focused when we are like in our training sessions, you yeah. know, like get what we need to get out of that hour and a half and then we can kind of focus on resting up in yeah. the other 23 hours of the day, you know, but really like dial in for two hours every day mm -hmm. and then you can do whatever you want. Usually sleep now, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to focus in on practice for sure now. Um, last question quick. Um, what's, what's the last thing you guys <laughs> need to tweak? Because you guys have obviously played good basketball this season, but you haven't peaked yet, which is generally a good thing. What's the one thing that you can still do to peak as a group? Hmm. I think just really like focusing in on like ourselves like I think we get kind of lost in terms of like who we're playing sometimes and I think like we're talented we know yeah. what we need to do like we've been in this spot the last few years so I think really just like um, zoning in on our talents and our like yeah yeah if we I think if we lock down on defense that'll be a big thing and then just focusing on our advantages and just our game really. Hey, it's Justin Marshall, Hot 101.3 and Boom 95.3 radio stations around the Lakeland. And here's what's going on in the area. Family Day Monday in Bonnyville starts at 5 o'clock. It's the International Food Extravaganza. It's all put on by the Bonnyville Community Church. And Pastor Ken joins me now. Pastor Ken, what's going on on Monday? Monday, uh, we are doing our annual uh, international meal. And we have done this for uh, at least 18 years. And... Uh, what we uh, do is just bring the, all the different nations and the different ethnic groups together to celebrate our own food. What kind of uh, different foods coming? Uh, I know I was talking to the Filipino community. Uh, they'll have some. Uh, what are some others? Oh, yeah. Filipino. We have, I'm from the Caribbean, so, and I'm from specifically from Trinidad and Tobago, so I'll be cooking up a lot of Trinidad and Tobago food. Uh, we'll have Hungarian this year, which we haven't ha had before, and... Uh, we have Ukrainian, we have um, uh, Mexican, and some others, you know, so just come along. You can get your tickets right here at iMobile Repair, and uh, 15 bucks to get in, hot1013fm.com is where you can get more details. Why do you guys do this, Pastor Ken? Why we do it is uh, to, to celebrate our community and to celebrate diversity of our community. You know, a lot of people don't recognize that we have so many different nations represented in this small community of Bonneville. And uh, so we just like to bring the nations together and the different ethnic groups together and celebrate. Thanks, Pastor Ken. Thank you very much. Definitely. And if you have an event you would like to feature on what's happening, shoot me an email, jmarshall at stingray.com. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. Today I'm joined here with Amber Fash. She's a recreational programmer for the Lloyd Minster Cultural and Science Centre. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of the programs that they're offering, plus their spring registration that is currently open. Uh, and so thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having and me. Getting the word out about these awesome programs. Just a couple of them, uh, the Click Bits and Tile Mosaic programs uh, are being offered. So mm. can you tell me just a little bit about what those programs are and what they offer people? Yes, so next week is February break. The kids are off. Uh, so we are offering two ClickBix tech camps. One is specifically for coding and one is graphic design. Um, and then we have our tile mosaics class as well. So the tech camps run Tuesday to Thursday and tile mosaics will be on Friday. And so what are some of the requirements that kids need to meet or if there is any uh, to register for these programs? Really, there's no prerequisites for any of them. Uh, come as a beginner, if you like. There are so many kids nowadays interested in coding and programming and designing, graphic design. So, I mean, if you come with an interest, it's even better. And Tile Mosaics is just a really fun program to do for all those little artsy kids like myself and yeah. And so when a, a child decides to join one of these programs, what will they uh, learn or take away from the, these programs? 
Well, uh, when you work with coding, so it, it's basic coding um, if statements and they're going to do they're going to do a fun twist on it, right? So you're going to make your own maze game. You're going to make your own characters and uh, have different kind of elements that are interactive, right? You're learning the basics of computer literacy, really, um, and how to make software. And like you mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, coding and science are those types of technology are pretty popular among students. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen there's pro, uh, coding programs in schools across LPSD and LCSD. Yes, so yeah. having a program during their off break, I think is a great way for them to just continue that. Absolutely. So have you, has the Cultural Science Center offered a program like this in the past? And have you seen uh, a huge increase or interest in uh, taking these programs? We actually, our first tech camp we ran last year, right after our summer fun camps, um, and it, it had a good response. It was kind of an overall, they did, they worked with 3D printers and a little bit of coding, a little bit of graphic design here and there. So it was received really well, and I'm excited to work with ClickBits again. <laughs> uh, they are actually a company, they base in Montreal, but they go over, over all over Canada, really, to uh, introduce these kind of programs to kids. And with the Tile Mosaics program, what will kids learn from that, or what will they be doing in that program? Well, so it's taught by Kira Stefanik, who is our educational programmer uh, at the center. And she went to California, actually, to learn uh, the different ins and outs of mo mosaics. She has a passion for it, and it's very beautiful. So it's just uh, using, we're using different uh, glass pieces. Don't worry, they're not sharp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they'll be learning um, kind of what white space and dark space mean and how to put things together, um, or put pieces together to make it look like what they want it to look like, right? So I think the two projects I can choose from is Seahorse or a flower. Awesome, and you have your spring registration opened. Mm -hmm. So how can, if uh, parents wanna put their children in either one of those programs or other programs, how can they go about doing that or where do they have to go to register their kids? Uh, well, they can register one of three ways. So they can go online, lloydminster.ca, and just go to program registrations. It'll, it'll walk you to Max Galaxy, which is our registration program. Or they can call the center at 780-874-3720. Or they can come on in and register in person. And uh, a lot of these programs are happening next week through uh, the February reading break as well, right? Yes, so we do have a cutoff uh, for the tech camp for Friday. So if, if you think your child would be interested in, in either the graphic design or the coding, try to get that in as soon as possible. Yeah, and then we have till Monday is our close date for the tile mosaics. All right, well, thank you so much for coming in and explaining and hopefully these programs entice some kids to come Absolutely. out and enjoy on their week off. Uh, it's always a nice way to keep them busy and keep parents uh, occupied as well. So that's awesome. Absolutely. Well, I know I have a niece that is just obsessed with drawing digitally yeah. and I know a lot of her friends are too. It's just something that has increased in popularity and it will continue to. Exactly. Mixing technology and learning. I think kids are now really into that sort of thing as mm -hmm. technology is a huge part of their lives as well. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take a look at your seven day forecast, a high of minus 17 and a low of minus 27 for tomorrow. Then on Sunday will be a high of minus 10, high of minus 18 on Monday, minus 20 on Tuesday, minus 7 on Wednesday, minus 2 on Thursday, and then we get above zero on Friday with plus 2 to wrap up your seven day forecast. And now as it is the end of the week, we are going to be taking a look at who is a pet pad winner of this week. Yes. We got a lot of submissions as we always do. I love scrolling through them and seeing how cute they are. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the gorgeous white cat smudge from the other day. Congratulations, Kim. I will be in contact with you on Monday to give you details on when and where you can pick up your pet pad gift card. Uh, and thank you to everyone who has submitted and please continue submitting because we do love seeing all of your pets and uh, all their cuteness. It's always cool to see like the different variety of yes. pets we get. You know, we've seen horses, birds, everything. There's such a cool mix always. Yes, we saw alpacas, geckos, uh, hamsters, bunnies. I love seeing the different varieties and then 
I'm obviously a dog lover, so I love seeing all the dogs all and my, cats. A lot of my friends have, like, snakes and stuff, and I don't think I could ever be a person to have a pet like that. Nope. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified of snakes, so it really wouldn't work out. I like the fluffy pets, anything that's soft that I can hold. I really wanted a chinchilla at one point because just how soft they are. <laughs> I just like stuff that don't won't attack me. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, thank you to everyone who uh, tuned into this hour. We'll have more next week.